Welcome back to Acre Homestead. Today we clearly have a massive project. My name is Becky if you are new and I have got probably a hundred pounds of apples that we are going to be processing in a bunch of different ways. I've got a whole list of different things I want to do today. Some tried and true, some brand new I've never done. The first thing we're gonna do is start processing these apples to make apple butter. I've already pre-weighed this out. So let's go over and get them washed. And I wanna get this cooking so we can start processing some other things while this is cooking down because this is gonna take a while. The only thing I've done to prepare for today is weigh out this amount of apples and get some of the equipment out we're gonna need. This is gonna be really easy. I've never made apple butter before but it seems pretty straightforward. I'm gonna use the majority of my little apples because I do wanna peel some apples, slice them, and make some apple pie filling and freeze dry sliced apples for snacking. But I don't wanna take the time to peel these itty bitty teeny tiny ones that we're gonna turn into a sauce, cook, 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 cook down, and then turn into apple butter. So I went through and I picked little tiny apples for this project. One of the awesome things about this recipe is we do not need to peel our apples, but it does say to core them and cut them into quarters. So that's what I'm gonna do. Today we are going to be using a lot of different pieces of equipment to preserve these apples and I can link everything down below. The recipe we're gonna be following is out of my canning cookbook and the reason I chose this one is because it uses less sugar. I have my mother-in-law's cookbook here, it's a canning cookbook as well, and it uses twice as much sugar, which down here it has the directions for twice as much sugar, but we're gonna go with the light sugar version. This is on page 52 in the Ball Complete Book of Home Preservation. Because these apples are organic and do have the possibility to have bug damage, I really need to process them all right away because if there is a little bit of bug damage, they will go bad very quickly. Here's an example where there's some bug damage. This whole side of the apple is perfectly fine. This I'm just gonna cut away and we'll use the rest of the apple. And part of the bug damage was on this piece, so I'll just cut that away. I do want to wash these apples I sliced one more time. So I'm going to get these washed that I've already cut. I still have to cut those, but we can get these cooking down while I finish processing those apples. But I want everything to be nice and clean before we put it into our pot. We need to add some apple cider. This is some apple cider I made in 2021. And we're going to get this warming I've been making applesauce every fall since I was in high school with my mom and I'm not sure why it's taken me this long to make apple butter it is so comforting and delicious one way we've been eating it already this year is actually in oatmeal in the mornings we've just been putting a good heaping spoonful in our oatmeal to sweeten it with a pat of butter. Talk about comforting. That feels fantastic. We officially have our first project going and it says that that needs to cook for 30 minutes until soft and then we will run it through a food mill and add the rest of the ingredients. So now the next thing we're gonna do is going to be so easy. I'm gonna take this basket of apples. I got this idea from one of you on Instagram. I had put up a question box asking, what should I do with all these apples? And one of the suggestions was, was to take a few of each of the varieties of apples that I have growing out in the orchard and put them in the refrigerator to see how long they'll last. So right here I have one variety, here I have another variety, and over here I have another variety. I thought that was brilliant. The only thing is that I had to go through and inspect each one of my apples and find perfect pristine apples, apples that had no big bruises on them, 
apples that look like they had no bug damage. Sometimes I miss and there is bug damage on my apples and I don't know till I open it. But I'm gonna stick this whole basket of apples in the fridge and we're gonna eat these fresh and we'll just see how long they last. So that's another project done. Let's go get this in the fridge. And while we're out there, we're gonna get our freeze dryer going because I want to cool that so we can get some apple slices in the freeze dryer. I already have my pears in here. Those I'm not gonna preserve. We are gonna eat all the pears fresh and they will last a long time in the fridge. Looks like I missed this one. This one has some damage on it. That looks like a bug hole. So I'm gonna bring that one inside. And just like that, we emptied a basket of apples except for this one. So that feels good to get that project done. So now what we need to do is replace the insert of the freeze dryer. I got a new insert. I have a medium sized freeze dryer and when I got my freeze dryer, they only the medium size came with a four tiered shelf insert. Well now for medium size, they have a five tier shelf. So I can now maximize my space when I run my freeze dryer with five trays instead of four trays. Anytime I have to do anything with my freeze dryer, I always get intimidated, but I watched a video on how to replace this and it looks so easy. So I thought I would bring you along as I replace this insert. The first thing I did was I removed the seal and now all I have to do is gently pull out the insert. And from what I understand, yep, right here, there is a little disconnector. This is the power. So I'm gonna remove this. Now I'm gonna take the new insert and there's a connector right here. And we're gonna connect these two, making sure they're latched fully. I heard it snap, so that means it should be connected. And then put it back in and that was it. That's all it took to do that. Now we're gonna run our freeze dryer today. So I wanna get this cooling. So I'm gonna put this back on. I'm gonna make sure it's pushed all the way in. When I cleaned my freeze dryer, was the first time I ever removed this tray and I did not put this seal on all the way. So I'm just pushing it around, making sure it's all the way inserted. Awesome, I'm gonna close it. I'm gonna push start so that it can cool while we go do other things inside. Before I start slicing apples to make the freeze dried apple slices and the apple pie filling, I'm gonna do the apple pie filling different than I did last year and I'll explain to you why I'm gonna do it different when we get to it. But I want to get my steam juicer going. We are gonna make more of the apple cider that I poured into the apple butter. And we're going to turn those exact same apples that we're gonna make the cider with into applesauce too. If you, live in the, if you don't live in the US, we call apple cider when it's non-alcoholic apple cider. And if it's alcoholic, we call it hard cider. So we're not making apple cider that's gonna be alcoholic today, it's just, plain apple juice. We're making apple juice. And we are gonna extract the juice. We're gonna take that pulp after it's extracted and we're gonna run that through the food mill and we're gonna jar that up and we're gonna jar that into applesauce. So this way we don't have to peel our apples, which normally when I make apple sauce, I peel and pour my apples, but I'm not gonna do it with this method. We're gonna give it a try. I'm gonna do the same thing where I'm going through and we don't have to do exact weights or anything for this. I'm gonna pick my small apples. I'm gonna do a variety of different apples and we're gonna start getting these cooked down so that these can be one, making the apple juice and two, we can start our applesauce process. I'm excited to give this a try and see if I like this method versus peeling and coring the apples to then turn them into applesauce. I wanna keep my larger apples out for turning into apple slices. This is now boiling, so I'm gonna turn this down. And I 
think I'm going to leave the lid off. And we're just going to let this simmer. I'm going to wash these apples twice just like I did before. If that didn't totally make sense, how I'm going to turn this into two products, apple cider and applesauce, don't worry. I'll walk you through the whole thing and it'll make sense in just a minute. Oh my goodness, this is a perfect apple. This is one I should have saved. I think I might eat this for breakfast because I haven't had any breakfast yet. Look how beautiful it is on the inside. Perfect. The reason I've never tried this in the past, even though I've had my steam juicer for three years, is because I've always been one to remove the peels before I make applesauce. I've tried making applesauce without removing the peels first, and I didn't like the flavor or the texture. Well, I invested this year, if you were with me when we did the tomato processing, one of the big tomato processing days, I invested in an electric food mill. And so that is what motivated me to finally try this method to get the apple juice using the steam juicer and then to take the pulp and run it through the food mill, remove the skins, and see if I like how that tastes. I'm, this is the busiest time of year, and I'm always up for trying to maximize my harvest and for maximizing my time and trying to be as efficient as possible. Sometimes these types of experiments work and sometimes they don't. And so I'm excited to kind of walk you through this journey to see how it goes. So just like before, I'm gonna wash the apples once, I'm gonna core them and then I'm gonna wash them again. I went ahead and put the steam juicer on the stove with some apples and I'm gonna get that process going. It does take a while for the steam to start to break down the apples and so I figured I might as well get some apples going. Now in the past when I have made apple juice using my steam juicer I typically just take the cores and the peels and I make apple juice using the cores and the peels and the flavor turns out really good. So if you've been with me in the past during apple processing days that's what I've done and I'm doing I'm changing it up a little bit so <laughs> this year you know, I'm always up for trying something new, trying to see if I can, you know, be a little bit more efficient. And this year, this is what I'm trying. And so we'll see how it goes. I'm just getting all these apples washed for a second time. This is the steam juicer here. The bottom part has water. And then the middle part is where it collects the juice. And this top part is where we're gonna put our apples. And there's holes in it. So as the steam comes up, the juice is released from the fruit and it's able to drop down. So now that that is going, I'm gonna stir the apple butter apples and we can kind of switch focus and work on another project while this cooks down. I'm probably gonna end up putting more apples in the juicer to make the applesauce and apple cider, but I want to start processing these bigger apples now I took some of each variety of apple that I have for that test in the fridge, except for one. This variety of apples, I don't think they were gonna last very long anyway because they all already have some bruising on them just from the picking process. They're very, very soft. I don't think that they're gonna last for any amount of time and they're bigger. So I thought they would be easier to use my peeler, core or slicer on the KitchenAid attachment. And I tried to pick and leave the biggest apples to run through this so that they would be easier with this attachment. This attachment is amazing. It's a peeler core slicer. I already got it attached. Another thing I did this morning before I started is I do have clean jars that I ran through the dishwasher so that when we're ready to start canning, I've got clean jars ready for me. Now with this peeler core slicer, I did oil this this morning so that it would run smoothly. I, I washed this, but I think something sticky or something must have been on it because it wasn't wanting to run nicely. So what I did is I just took a little bit of olive oil. I'm gonna wash this when I'm done so it doesn't matter what kind of oil I use, just a food grade oil and I ran it along the track so that when I turn this on, I did it on both sides so that it would glide nicely. 
So I haven't used this in a year and I need to remember how to use it. I'm gonna stick my apple on here and then I'm gonna put the stem through here, get it lined up, turn it on. I think I need to get something to put underneath it. I think I got a little ahead of myself. I'm going to fill this huge bowl up with water so that as the apples come off the apple core peeler slicer, I can put them into the water with lemon juice. grabbed a cookie sheet to put underneath my apple core sealer apple core peeler slicer so that it can catch the juice because this does create juice and it can catch the peels so I'm gonna do both varieties of apples and or actually I think I have four varieties of apples here but this is why I wanted to keep the largest ones for apple coring, peeling, slicing. I do need to keep a knife out because sometimes it doesn't get all the seeds. And because this is going to be for apple pies, apple crisps, and freeze drying, I don't want any seeds. So if it doesn't get all the seeds out, then I'm just going to cut that off. Get this in the water. When I did this last year, a few of you guys had recommended you can use salt instead of lemon juice. I've never done that before. I've always done lemon juice, so that's what I'm doing today, but I thought that that was kind of interesting. So just know if you want to try it, you can do salt instead of lemon juice. I don't know how much though, salt versus lemon juice. This electric attachment for the KitchenAid is really, really nice to have on hand. I don't usually pull this thing out if I'm just, you know, peeling and slicing six or seven apples at a time. But on a day like this, where I've got baskets full of apples to do, this piece of equipment really does save quite a bit of time. Now I am gonna cut the apples in half. And I'm also, when I cut them in half, I'm going to kind of pull the apples apart so that each part of the apple can get in contact with the lemon juice and the lemon juice water is just to help prevent the apples from oxidizing they do oxidize just a little bit because you know there there's a lot of time between when I start this and when I end up dealing with all of them and but the lemon juice really does help so I'm also going to take the time some of them you know do have bug damage some of them the core doesn't get removed perfectly so I do take the time to also inspect every apple as it gets off the peel or core or slicer and I can cut any of that stuff away as needed. Now in the past, what I've done with these apple peels and cores is I've actually, these are the apple remnants that I've run through my steam juicer and I've used the peels and the cores from this process and turned that into the apple juice. I didn't do that on this day because I figured I would get enough apple juice from the apples that we're gonna turn into apple sauce. And you will see as the day goes on how that experiment works. You can also take these peels and cores and turn them into apple scrap vinegar. I definitely have done that many, many times and that's a great way to use up your apple scraps. We are making fantastic progress. There is already juice that's starting to form on this second layer here. That means that these apples are starting to steam. I think our apple butter, yes, it feels all soft and ready to go for the next step. So now we need to run this through the food mill, which I still need to get set up. So let me get that set up real quick and then we can move on to the next step with this apple butter. 
So this is the same machine that I use when I process the tomatoes. I loved it for that. I've never done this for applesauce. I always peel my applesauce and core it before I make it. So I'm excited to try this. See if I can remember how to set it up. Friend, I just about had a panic. I could not find where I put these little, I don't know what these are called, and I need them in order to attach this part to the actual motor. I remember thinking, oh my goodness, I need to put those somewhere really important because, or somewhere I'll remember, I don't wanna put them in the box because they're little and they could get lost. And then I couldn't remember where I put them and thankfully I found them. So we are in business here. And I remember how to put this machine together. The last time I used this was the first time I used it when we did the tomatoes and I was up until 10.30 that night. So this machine is really easy to put together. It's actually easier to put together than my manual one. Those go in there. To help with cleanup, I'm gonna put a towel down and I've got a bowl to catch what will be the apple butter. I'm gonna move the machine closer to the bowl. Friend, I don't know why I keep forgetting to put a plate to catch the peels. <laughs> I had never done this before in my manual one, but this is the second time I've used this and this is the second time I have forgot to put something down to catch the peels. So what's happening here is this machine is pushing these softened apples through this sieve and the pulp part of the apple that we're gonna turn into apple butter is going into the bowl and the skins and any of the pits that I may have not fully cut out are going onto the plate. So normally to get this applesauce, I would peel them first before I cook them, but look at how beautiful this is coming through this food mill. This might just be revolutionary. I think that may have just revolutionized the way I make applesauce. If I just had a big pot with all my apples cut into it, just like I did, I would have the perfect texture applesauce with way, way, way less work. So right here, this is applesauce. You could jar this up, water bath can it. You need to add a little bit of lemon juice and then bam, you have applesauce. But I'm doing this method as an experiment because I wanna see if I can extract some of the juice as well. But if I just had a big pot, right here would be the apple juice. But we're gonna turn, not apple juice, applesauce. We're gonna turn this applesauce into apple butter. This has a great texture. I don't like leaving my skins in. There's, a, there's tons of ways you can do applesauce. Some people leave the skin, skins in, they cook it down and they use an immersion blender and they blend it, but I don't like the texture that gives, so I've always peeled them. And this is beautiful, beautiful. Now we just need to see how well this experiment goes, because this one is perfect. I am so excited that I have that food mill because that just saved me a ton of time from hand peeling. Okay, so now we need to add the rest of our ingredients to what will be our apple butter here. I have the stove back on to low, and now I need to add four and a half cups of sugar to our nine cups of apples. And this is half of the sugar of the other recipe that I found. So that's two, three, four, and a half. Now I'm gonna add the cinnamon. I'm gonna leave the clove out. The recipe calls for clove and cinnamon but I'm just gonna add cinnamon. I'm gonna add one tablespoon of cinnamon. Stir this together, and then we're gonna let this slowly cook on low until it's very, very thick. I think I'm gonna add a little bit of salt to counterbalance the sweetness. Just two pinches. I just cannot believe how awesome that food mill is and how much easier my life is when it comes to applesauce. I could make a huge pot of applesauce 
in a fraction of the time I used to be able to make applesauce. Okay, I wanna check to see how much juice we have. Oh, wow, let me show you how much juice we have. So we've got, oh, whoa, that's hot. So we have about an inch and a half of juice, so I'm gonna let this continue to cook while I continue to slice apples. Let's see how tender these apples are on the top. Oh, they're pretty tender. I'm gonna let them go for a little bit longer. In the meantime, I'm gonna load up some of my freeze dryer cheese because my freeze dryer should be cool. And I think I have sliced enough apples to load five trays. I also got the silicone mats. So that is awesome. And I also have now an extra set of trays. So depending on how many apples we end up getting, I might load up my second set of trays and get those in the freezer. So when this first round is done out of the freeze dryer, I can load these up. But I wanna make sure I get enough apple pie filling today. So we'll just see how many we end up freeze drying. I think I wanna leave some of these in rounds. These are gonna be just for snacking. Freeze dried fruit is so yummy and it's so expensive to buy at the store. So this is a great way to use up these apples. You know what, if I cut them in half, I think I can get more on here. So I think that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do halves, not holes. Cause I wanna use my space as efficiently as possible. And by using the peeler slicer core, they're all gonna be the same thickness, which will be good cause they'll all be finished at the same time. These end up being a huge hit in my house. We run two loads of these sliced apples. I get this tray in the freeze dryer turned on and going, and then I get another set of trays in the freezer freezing so that I can run those as soon as these ones come out. And it just saves my freeze dryer a step. But you can see how thin these apple slices are and how thick my trays are. So when I do a third round of apples, I end up going out into the orchard and you know collecting more apples. I end up not using my slicer peeler quarter because I want my apple slices thicker so that I can get more apples in the freeze dryer. So I end up just peeling them by hand and coring them and then cutting them into thicker chunks so that I can get more apple on my freeze dryer tray. But the texture of these has been a huge hit in my family. We have loved them. Our freeze dryer is cooled, so we can get it loaded with our five trays, which is so awesome. Now it's freezing and then it will start freeze drying. I have my drain valve closed. I think I'm gonna have enough apples to do one more load, but I wanna make sure I make the apple pie filling first and see how much I get of that before I designate any more for freeze drying. I think I'm gonna take these apples and start processing them through the mill because they're very, very tender. Oh yeah, they're very, very soft. I think I wanna try reconstituting some freeze dried apples into, and making like an apple pie or something into so we'll see. I might try that, but we have to freeze dry the apples first. So I need to get a bowl. If I don't like the texture or the taste of this right now, then I'm not gonna go through the effort of making more of these and putting them through the juicer. I'll just put them into my big 30 quart pot and make the applesauce just like I made that apple butter, but not turn it into apple butter. I just turned off the stove for the apple juice because I have the lid off of it and I don't want it to continue to steam the apple juice out. This might not be, this might be a flop. I don't know, I've never done this before, so we're, we're learning together. I say that comment about turning the apple slices that we freeze dried into something. <laughs> I'm telling you, it looks good. The, the, the motor on this electric food mill is a little bit loud, but it's worth the time saving effort of it being a little bit loud but I was saying I should turn some freeze dried slices into an apple pie. Well, that never happens because <laughs> the slices end up getting eaten as a snack. So anyway, I thought that was kind of funny. I had high hopes for those freeze dried apple slices. So here you can see just how thick 
the applesauce is coming out because obviously we extracted a bunch of the juice from the apples. So this is some pretty thick applesauce because obviously some of the liquid is now in juice form. So the biggest thing is just giving it a taste test and seeing what the texture's like and seeing if I like this. So let's give this a try. We also need to try the juice to see if we like the juice. Growing up, one of my friends, her mom made applesauce every year and it was so good. She didn't can it, she froze it. And I loved it kind of like icy, crystally coming out of the freezer and my friend liked to heat it up and eat it warm. I just have really good memories. We ate a lot of applesauce growing up. That's great. The texture's good. The sweetness, it's not too tart. Applesauce is one of those funny things. It really depends on what kind of apples you use, what flavor you're gonna get. And that has great flavor. I think I wanna continue to cook down more apples. Let's go try the, the juice to see if we like that and see if it's worth doing this step because this was really easy, but for the rest of the applesauce, I could just throw it in a pot. So let's go try the juice. I'm gonna stir this apple butter. I gotta keep a close eye on this because I don't want that to scorch. That's one nice thing about doing it this method is you don't have to worry about your applesauce scorching on the bottom. That's good. It has a very mild flavor. It's not overpowering. It's not super, super apple-y, which is kind of surprising. It just must be the variety of apples. So now I have to decide what I want to do. Do I want to make more of this juice? Because I could just jar this up or I could grab my large pot and just start cooking down a bunch of apples. Mm. What do I want to do? Let's give this apple butter a try before it totally cooks down so we can kind of taste the before and after. Wow, now that is delicious. The sugar, and it could be the salt too, really brings out the apple flavor. Woo, that is really, really good. I'm excited for this. Okay, I still haven't decided what I'm gonna do. Hmm. I think what I'm gonna do is I am gonna jar up this apple juice, and then the rest of the apples I'm just gonna cook down and leave the juice in with the applesauce because this doesn't have a tremendous amount of flavor. Last time I did this, it must just be the variety of apples. There was a lot more apple-y flavor. This is so mild that I think I would rather just keep the juice in with the apples and have a little bit of a thinner applesauce. I think that's gonna be just fine. This apple juice will get enjoyed. What it'll end up probably being turned into is an apple simple syrup. I'll open one of these and add equal parts sugar and it'll probably be a cocktail mixer. That's what I'm thinking. Just a really simple holiday way to use up this beautiful, I mean it is beautiful. I just don't think it's worth the flavor that I'm getting. I think, I think it would just be easier just to cook the applesauce all together. I'm just grabbing these jars out of the dishwasher I think I'm just gonna add this juice to my applesauce. So I'm gonna get my big pot out so we can start cooking down some applesauce in this pot. One of the awesome things about being the boss of your own kitchen is you can adapt and do what works best for you. I think that if I had used the apples from my last homestead, that method would be primo. But I think that those apples, at least the ones that I did in this steam juicer round, just did not have quite as much flavor. And so I don't think it, for me with those apples, it was really worth that extra step. But I think it's a brilliant concept and a brilliant idea, but I think I'm just gonna stick with because I have my really awesome food mill. From now on, I'm glad I tried it because now I know. I'm just going to cook my apples in a big pot run them through the food mill and have apple juice or applesauce. The funny thing is, I'm actually gonna take this juice and put it back in my pot <laughs> because I'm gonna need some liquid to get this 
big pot of apples going so it doesn't scorch like we did with the apple butter. And I don't wanna add water, so I might as well add this juice. So all of that was an experiment to see if that method worked for me. I don't think I'm gonna do that method in the future, but this method I think is gonna work for me. So now I know. I've been wanting to try this method for the last, since I've had my steam juicer. These next variety of apples that I'm gonna turn into applesauce are a lot sweeter. They are probably, twice as sweet. And I'm gonna eat that one. And so these ones probably would make a great candidate, I need to wash them, for using the steam juicer. But I'm not gonna use the steam juicer. Can you tell me if I need to core these? I'm kind of thinking I might not need to core them if I run them through the food mill. The reason I stopped working with the apple coral peeler slicer for the apples for the apple pie filling is because I want to make sure that I'm trying to be as efficient in the kitchen as possible. And so I really want to make sure that I get some apples on the stove cooking so we can turn these into applesauce and that these apples can be cooking while we go back and put our focus on peeling and slicing apples for the apple pie filling. So that's what I'm doing. I got the stove going and it's working for us. So now we can come back to this project. I usually end up doing big projects like this where I've got multiple things going on at one time because I'm already making the kitchen very sticky, very dirty. I'm already messing up, a ton, not messing up, but I'm already dirtying up a ton of cooking equipment. What's a little bit more? So that's ten, that tends to be how I do things. I like to try to get in the kitchen and get as many things done and going as possible. And I do try to think through the ways of how can I have my appliances working for me, like having my stove go with both the apple butter and the applesauce, and then I can switch focus and I can you know start peeling and slicing these apples. I tend to usually put some music in or an audiobook. On this day I'm listening to an audiobook or I will listen to podcasts to keep me company. Sometimes I will have friends and family come over and help me, but on this day it was just me and you in the kitchen and getting a ton of stuff done. So now I'm going to load up my other freeze dryer trays and I'm going to get these in the freezer so that these can be frozen and then as soon as my other trays come out of the freeze dryer I can pop these right into the freeze dryer. So I'm really excited to have two sets of trays and to have these plastic covers that I can stack them now in my freezer. It's going to make freeze drying projects a lot more efficient. This was the first time I've ever freeze dried a bunch of apples for snacking and so I wanted to do them plain but I have seen some people put cinnamon on them and I think that would be really good too. I officially emptied my last basket. So every apple in my house has been processed. I have been stirring my apple butter every couple minutes. Our applesauce is almost done. I'm gonna get this out of the way. Now this definitely needs to be scrubbed, but I'm gonna do that when I scrub the rest of the the kitchen. So I'm just going to get this out of our way. I'm going to get this out of our way. And now we're left with this really, really big bowl of apple slices. And I've got a couple different things. We're going to make a quick bread for today and for breakfast for the next week. But I want to pour off all this lemon juice so we can kind of process the rest of this. to do is I want to flash freeze some of these to use in things like baked oatmeal and things where I want chunks of apples that I don't want already pre-seasoned so I can put them in just whatever I want without having them seasoned and they, they can still have their texture as opposed to using like the applesauce for a quick bread. So on this cookie sheet 
I'm going to just put two pieces of parchment paper down. And then I'm going to lay these apples out, not any necessarily perfectly flat, but flat enough that I'll be able to kind of break them up once they freeze. So I'm going to pop this in the freezer, and then once they're frozen, I'll put them in a freezer Ziploc bag. Now we're going to make our apple pie filling. The way I made my apple pie filling last year is I actually took a piece of parchment paper and I laid it out in a pie plate, and then I made my pie filling, I put that on top, and I threw that in the freezer with no crust. Once it was frozen in my pie sh shape, I took that out of the freezer and I wrapped it up, and that works perfectly. But the one thing with that is I then had to bake a whole pie. And I want to be able to make hand pies or smaller pies and not have to make a whole pie. I want to have a little bit more flexibility with my apple pie filling. I also made some apple crisps and I threw those in the freezer, just whole apple crisps made up. But because I did the apple pies and the crisp, I then had to bake them and that's what they were. I want a little bit more flexibility this year with my pie filling. And so I'm just gonna make up the pie filling and freeze it and then I can turn it into whatever I want. So I just put in some flour. I'm not measuring any of this. I'm just going to put it in here and give the apples a taste test and go with that. So that's brown sugar. And to make sure that my apple butter is not scorching, I'm constantly, constantly, constantly coming over here and stirring the pot. So I probably put about a tablespoon of salt because this is a 30 quart bowl. So this is a lot of apples in here. Salt, brown sugar, cinnamon is the next thing we're gonna add. And I'm just trying something different this year as opposed to what I did last year to see which way I like it better. So probably put that much cinnamon. I'm gonna get in here with my hands and mix all this together. That looks about right, but I wanna taste it. And I'm mostly tasting it for the amount of sugar I have in here. Mm. Obviously I can taste the raw flour and it will be cooked, but that sweetness level is great. I've got freezer bags here. I'm gonna put apple pie filling. I think I'm gonna be able to get three out of this container. I just had an idea. I can still freeze these in pie shapes and because I have put them in a freezer Ziploc bag, I could thaw them and turn them into something else. But if I wanted to make a whole pie, I at least have it in a pie pan shape. So last year when I did this, I did not put, I put it in parchment paper. And so it, if I had thawed it, it would have made a huge mess. So this way, it's perfect. You know, I think I'm only gonna get two pies out of this. Cause this, I like a really full pie. Let's see, this one has more. Okay, this one has more. So this will be my apple pie. I'm gonna get all the air out first. And I'll freeze it just like that. And so when I, I can bake a pie from frozen, I can just pop.
pop that out, put it in a pie shell with a top and bottom crust if I want, or I could just turn it into something else. But at least it's in the pie shape. I've got another pie pan. This one has more apples. I'm going to do the same thing with this one. And then that third one, I will just lay it flat and I'll turn that into like hand pies or something like that. Into the freezer they go. When I was just out in the freezer, the apples that I'm flash freezing, I just fluff them up a little bit so that they aren't sticking together because I overfilled that pan. Now we can get all the apples through the mill because all these apples are nice and tender. And then we can wash this out and we can start canning. We are gonna process these apples through the mill just like we did for the apple butter, but we get to stop short of having to turn it into apple butter. Just run it through, put it in a bowl, and you have instant applesauce. I decided I wanna make an applesauce bread cake type thing, so I need to find a recipe. I was gonna make muffins, but I think I would rather make a quick bread or something. So once we get this apple processed, we are going to make some sort of baked good. It smells so good in here, I want us to be able to, let's see if I can do this without making a disaster. I want us to be able to enjoy something for breakfast for the next couple days. And when I was making the tomato sauce, you all had mentioned that you never wanna run this without anything in it, so I really appreciate that tip. A few of you have mentioned that you have this machine and you love it, and you love it just as much as I do because this thing is amazing. Now, I am liking the texture of this so much better with the juice in it. I think it's just a better texture altogether. And I do want to give it a taste test and see if we need to sweeten it at all. I don't think so. Now that it has all the apples in it, there's four different apple, no, there's five different apple varieties in it. The first round only had, I think one variety of apples. This tastes really good. Every time I've ever had the best applesauce, it's always when I mix multiple varieties together instead of it just being one variety. All right, I'm gonna do the same thing that I did last time because this is my first time doing this with apples. I'm going to rerun these skins through, but instead of running them into my bowl where I really like this product, I'm gonna move this to the side. I'm gonna grab another bowl. I really liked how the tomatoes came out when I ran it through a second time, but I've never done the apples, so I wanna give it a try. I think I'm gonna go ahead and try it before I run the rest through. because It's kind of got a different color to it. So it's good. I was worried the texture might be off or different. It's not, it's great. So look at all this extra applesauce we got by running through those skins a second time. I'm gonna stir all the applesauce together so we have a consistent flavor throughout and texture throughout because we used multiple different apples. And so I just want it to be consistent. When it comes to this applesauce, I am following the guidelines that are laid out in my ball canning book to make sure that I have a safe canning product. Now, when you're canning applesauce, you can sweeten it, but you don't have to sweeten it. Now we do need to add lemon juice to make sure it is proper acidity. So I just highly encourage you, whenever you're canning, you follow the guidelines according to whatever it is you are canning. I just Googled applesauce bread and found one, and we are gonna make that one. I can link it down below. First thing I'm gonna start with is one cup of butter, salt, and four eggs. I've never seen a recipe call for three whole cups of applesauce before which is amazing. I'm excited that I found this recipe, so hopefully it turns out well. So the next thing is the applesauce. Mm. 
one and a half cups of sugar, three cups of flour. I probably should have mixed the dry ingredients or the wet ingredients before I added my dry ingredients. I gotta go get some more flour. Baking soda, and I need chopped walnuts, so I'm just going to chop them like that. And that's all the ingredients. So we're gonna mix this together and get this into some bread loaf pans. Well, that was really easy to put together. So now I'm gonna get these in these two baking dishes. One will probably end up going in the freezer for Josh and I for later. And then the other one we will have for breakfast. That was a little bit easier than muffins. I didn't quite have it in me to make muffins. That's what I originally was going to do, but bread is easier. These are probably going to bake for a good 45 minutes to an hour. Now we actually have almost everything done. We just need to can the applesauce and well, this is not done yet. This is going to take a while longer. You can see how much it's cooked down but it has quite a bit more to cook down. But we can get the applesauce canned now. We're gonna water bath can in this pot and I'm gonna get this on the stove. This water is not warm. My applesauce is not very warm either. So we'll try to get them about the same temperature. I am adding lemon juice according to the recipe for how many apples I have. Whenever you're canning, make sure you're following the recipe to the T so that you have a safe product I'm gonna can my applesauce in pints because I have applesauce downstairs in quarts and I don't have any in pints and sometimes I don't need a whole quart. The apple bread recipe that we just made is absolutely delicious and it will be a family favorite. Now, I did choose not to sweeten my applesauce this year. I didn't find that it needed it. Some years the applesauce needs it and some years it doesn't and so I was really glad that this applesauce did not need it. So I'm going to go through my regular canning steps, wipe the rims, fill to the proper headspace, put a new lid on, put a ring on, and then we can get these water bath canned. I'm really excited to have some pints on my pantry shelf. My goal, as soon as I get this canner load full, is to then start cleaning up because I want to get my apple core peeler slicer cleaned before it completely dries and becomes very difficult to clean and I also want to get my food mill cleaned as well before it has time to dry. It looks like I can fit 12 pints in here. I have them in here once this comes to a boil I'll process it for the proper time and yeah I've got a mess to clean. Let me show you what mess I've got around me to clean. The realities of a really big processing day. It looks even worse from this angle but we can get it clean I need to unload my dishwasher first because I ran it this morning with all the canning jars in it and a bunch of other just random miscellaneous dishes that one has in their house. So let me get that unloaded and then I'm going to start tackling all these dishes. I am just blown away by all that we were able to get done so far on this day. We have the freeze dryer going plus we have more apples ready to go into the freeze dryer. We have breakfast for the next week in the oven, a ton of applesauce, and apple butter. We have enough apple pie filling for two apple pies. We have another bag of apple pie filling that I could turn into hand pies or crisps. And we have just plain frozen apples in the freezer. I think our apple butter is ready. If I let it go anymore, I'm gonna have to stand here and stir it the whole time because these bubbles are so big. They're making a big mess. So I think we can go ahead and get this jarred up. So this is the applesauce and that is gonna go in with the apple butter when we process the apple butter. So let me get a funnel. I wish you could smell my house right now between the apple butter, the applesauce, the apple cake, it is incredibly sweet and fall smelling in here right now. 
For making apple butter for the first time, I am so happy with how this recipe turned out. I am really glad that I went with the lower sugar recipe as opposed to the more traditional one that had quite a bit more sugar to apple ratio. I think this recipe really allowed for the apple's flavor to shine through and it was the perfect spice level. I'm glad I didn't add the clove. Sometimes I just want something cinnamon and that's all. So that's what I went with. Now I did let this apple bread cool for about 10 minutes before I turn it out onto this cooling rack. I did treat myself to a warm slice of apple bread after I got the kitchen mostly clean. Normally I would let bread, whether it's a quick bread or a yeast bread, cool completely because it is better to let it cool before you slice into it, but sometimes you can't resist a hot piece of quick bread. And after a day like today, it was the perfect way to end the day. Now these are the apple slices that are just plain apple slices that are frozen that I could turn into an apple crisp. I could turn into an apple pie. I could really do whatever I want with them. What I think I'll probably do with them is they'll probably get crushed up into little chunks and put in apple baked oatmeal or apple quick breads or something like that. But I wanted some that didn't have any sugar or anything on them so that I could kind of do whatever I wanted with them. So I'm gonna get those in the freezer. I'm going to get the food mill put back away. I highly encourage you, if you get one, make sure it is cleaned before all the pieces dry with either tomatoes or apples or whatever it might be, because it's gonna be a whole lot easier to clean. So we had the apple sauce and the apple butter processed for the proper time. So now I can get those out of the canner. Kitchen is clean. All the equipment is basically put back together how it's supposed to be. I do need to put this away. This was a little bit of a waste of getting this out, but how was I supposed to know what my preferred method of making applesauce was unless I tried this method out, which I've been wanting to try for a long time. So it was a good experiment. Now I know I'm just gonna use my big pot, thanks to my new strainer. Put all my apples in there at one time, cook it, and use my, that's what this box is right here, my strainer, the thing with this is though, you wanna get it washed ASAP. You do not want all of the apple pulp to dry onto this part of the machine because it will be nearly impossible to get the apple, tomato, whatever it is, out. So while everything is still hot or at least soft and not dried and sticky, get your machine and all the parts washed so next time you need to use it, it is prepped and ready to go. So I just need to put this away and empty the canner. I've got my canner timer set for the rest of the applesauce and apple butter. We got 14 or 16 pints of applesauce, six pints of apple butter, two apple pies plus an some sort of apple dessert of some kind made up. So that's three apple desserts peeled, prepped, seasoned, ready to go. We got a bag of just diced apples for things like baked oatmeal and whatever we might want just some frozen apples for. And we got our two sets of trays ready for the freeze dryer. So one's running in the freeze dryer and one is ready to go in the freezer as soon as that one comes out. So this was a great day. I'm so excited about my new sauce master because I now have a way easier way to process apples. It almost feels like a weight lifted because every time applesauce came around, it is a lot of work because I would peel the apples and now I know I don't have to peel them. I like the texture, the flavor and everything when I put it through the sauce master. So that's a huge win. Oh, our apple bread. Talk about a fantastic day. Let's give this a try. I wish I had a little bit of butter softened. I don't. Let's give it a try. The walnuts were an addition for me. I never put walnuts in bread. With a little bit of butter, this would be perfect. Josh will eat walnuts in his quick bread, but he prefers it not, so 99% of the time I make it without it, but today I put some walnuts in it for me. Mm. This is a winner, winner recipe. Okay, I'm gonna set that down and I'm going to actually make some dinner. I am gonna be making five casseroles. So if you were interested in seeing that, 
Please consider subscribing if you are new. The first one tonight is going to be chicken rice in the oven. The entire thing is made in the oven and it's delicious. It's my mother-in-law's. Well, she found the recipe and then adapted it. And it's her adaptation that I'm gonna be making tonight. And I can't wait to have it for dinner and it's so easy. So friend, thank you so much for taking time out of your day to spend time with me. If you enjoyed this, I will pop a couple of my other videos here. You can go enjoy between now and my next upload. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being you. And I can't wait to see you next time. Bye friend.